Welcome to the Great Salt Lake Update for December 2022. The water level in the Great Salt Lake has declined to its lowest level since they started tracking water levels over 175 years ago. Recently, the elevation dropped so low that the equipment we rely on to track water levels no longer works properly. Managed by the U.S. Geological Survey, the gauge at the Salt Air Boat Harbor has been in use in one form or another for over 100 years. Unfortunately, the water in the harbor has dropped so low that the gauge cannot accurately monitor the water level. To check the current elevations, I will now use the causeway gauge just east of Lakeside, Utah. Before we get into the water evaluations, please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel. I really value your support. The water level at the Great Salt Lake is currently 4,188 feet 9 inches. The lake has declined 2 feet since the beginning of the year. The current water level is 10 feet below the 4,198.8 feet average water level for this date. The record high elevation was set on June 3, 1986, at 4,211.7 feet. At that time, the lake's total surface area was 2,300 square miles. The Great Salt Lake reached a new record low of 4,188 feet 7 inches on November 18. The surface area of Utah's largest lake has dropped to just 920 square miles. When you look at previous year's water levels, we see the Great Salt Lake was at 4,190 feet at this same time last year. Back in 2020, the water level was at 4,192 feet. On this same date in 1963, the water level was 4,191 feet. In 1963, the Great Salt Lake was also hitting record lows. As the Great Salt Lake continues to decline to all-time low water levels, the ability to save the lake is rapidly disappearing. With every inch the water elevation drops, the water becomes more concentrated with salt. The increasing saline levels make it difficult for the ecology of the lake to survive. This ecology is very valuable. The brine shrimp industry alone is worth over $100 million annually. To get an idea of just how fragile the Great Salt Lake is, we just need to look at the northern portion of this tremendous body of water. Back in 1904, the Southern Pacific Railroad constructed a rail line that cuts directly across the northern portion of the Great Salt Lake. The first iteration of the crossing included a 12-mile long open trestle that would allow water to flow between the northern and southern halves of the lake. That trestle was replaced in the 1950s by an earthen causeway that effectively cut the lake into two separate bodies of water. The three rivers that flow into the Great Salt Lake, the Bear, Weber, and Jordan Rivers, all flow into the southern portion of the lake. This caused the saline level in the southern half to decline, while the northern portion became much saltier. The high salinity level is why the northern half looks pink. This imbalance of salinity caused by the salt harvest and mineral extraction on the northern side to become more profitable than on the southern side. It also caused a significant reduction in the brine shrimp population in the south. Over the years, new culverts were constructed that again allowed water to flow between the north and south side of the lake. And in 2000, these culverts were deepened to help rebalance the salinity. All this human intervention into the natural cycles of the Great Salt Lake is evidence of how fragile this lake is. As we continue to overuse water that should flow into the Great Salt Lake and allow the water levels to decline, we risk losing the economic benefits the lake provides. Estimates of the water level falling just a few more feet range between $1.7 to $2.2 billion, including $1.3 billion from lost mineral extraction, $81 million in lost recreation, and $67 million from the lost brine shrimp industry, not to mention the health costs from the toxic elements released into the air as the former lake bed becomes exposed. As always, I will continue to monitor the situation. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I value your support. Thanks for watching.